Are you ready? Louder. There are so many. Come on. Is that the loudest you can do? Okay. I'll try again later. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Aris. Uh, I'm Greek. I live in London. Um, I'm also the organizer and founder of CityJS. Um, this year I organized like five conferences already. And this is the first talk I'm doing for one talk. I can do one talk in, in a year. Uh, I'm also a Prisma ambassador. I don't know how many of you know Prisma, but it's a very cool ORM. Um, okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, okay, yeah. Sorry. So, yeah, I've heard a lot of talks today. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm one of the developers that I come, you know, I've been developing for like 15 years. Uh, things have changed quite a lot. And, and our task, like front end developers or JavaScript developers, it has uh, become a bit more complicated. We have to, to go through a lot of um, like complexities. I did put i8 and i9 because it's, it's dead, but I hate it. <laughs> and I'm happy that's no longer available. Um, and uh, I'm fan of uh, Chromium and uh, the Chrome browsers. Um, but yeah, there are a lot of inconsistencies. We, we have to work front end, back end. Um, we have to fight with a monolith. Uh, we have to work on somebody else's code that sometimes we don't understand, but we still have to maintain. And there are a lot of other dependencies that we have to go through. Okay. Okay, I'll stay here. And yeah, most of the time, we don't know what we are doing, right? And then you see that tweet. Um, it says, server-side apps were so, so slow. So we decided to start building with client-side apps. But then we decided to go back and do server-side apps. And we thought that client-side apps were stupid from the beginning. How many of you thought about that? Many, I think. OK. Um, and what we want is to have code reusability. We want to have consistency. We want to have um, testing. We want to be fast in getting stuff into production. Um, we care about performance, usability, accessibility. There's so many things. Um, but what we need to do is to push back. We need to think about architecture. I think that's what Attila said before, right? It's all about architecture. It's not just going and develop something, and then after a long time, you think, oh, um, I wish I haven't done that. I wish um, there was a point of, of time I was going to do it differently. Um, so we need to plan this architecture. Um, so I don't know how many of you know Luca Mezalira. He's, uh, he has been a, a really big inspiration for me. Um, he helped me start um, CityJS five years ago. And Luca has been uh, advocating, and he has also done a book about uh, building micro front ends. Um, what is a micro front end? A micro front end represents a business domain that is autonomous, independently deliverable, and owned by a single team. When we are building micro front ends, we have to make certain decisions. The first thing we need to do is define. Are they gonna, there are two, two types, and we're going to see in the next slide. A vertical and horizontal split. Um, we need to think about routing. Um, and we need to think about composing. And how they communicate. So these are the four big questions. So. What we have here, and we have the two different types. 
horizontal and vertical split. We can have a team working, uh, if we take horizontal um, on the header and the footer, team C, while the team A is working on the product details. Uh, we can have a team B that is working on the product's carousel. So we separate the dependencies between teams and we try to um, even, not just the dependencies on how the teams work, but how things that can be delivered and how we can make changes because, and I have to tell you, I've been working on a project about a month ago. It was a very old, old system and it, was, it looked like micro front end. It was creating like a lot of little um, um, uh, React apps that eventually, you were, as the code was building up, it was adding much more packages. When you were about to deploy, the deploy time, as you were adding more features, it was increasing, which means that um, it was taking a lot of time to deploy. If you follow the micro front end um, paradigm, you can deploy and uh, stuff separately. And you can deploy on, um, you can build stuff on runtime. So if I'm going to change the product details, I don't have to rebuild and deploy all the other parts of the page. Make sense? The, the, that is the horizontal. The vertical is when a team is working on different pages, like you see on that, on that um, um, uh, diagram. Okay, um, I have been reading a lot about it, but I wasn't sure how, um, how does it work. Um, I'm very visual kind of person. I do read books, but most of the time I wanna see it. I like movies a lot. When I see it, I'm much more able to understand how it works. So, um, in the past two months, I've been doing a lot of research. I've, I've read um, Lucas' book, then I start going through um, and try to find people that they are building with micro front ends and try to understand how they do it. Uh, because I organize conferences, I know a lot of people, uh, speakers and people that work with uh, these kind of things. So it was very easy for me to go and approach uh, certain people and, um, and get ideas of how to do it. Um, so the first person was Alex Lobera, who is also from Spain. Uh, Alex has created a library which is called Lint.js. So this is the URL. I will share my slides after and you can, uh, you can take a look. Um, basically, you go, you do an, uh, like an NPM install. Let me make that a bit bigger. You do an NPM create micro front end. That is going to, to, in, to install the micro, the micro front end um, framework that Lint.js and uh, Alex has created. Uh, let's move it fast forward. Okay, yeah. You can choose a name. Then, um, um, so I call it Alicante Micro Frontends. Um, you can pick, so the, there is a container that runs on a specific port. So you can say it's going to run on the 33,000. Uh, and you can choose the first micro front end. So you, that's it, it has created. Um, so that's really good. Um, so the, in the next uh, video, oh, one second, play. You can, you can see the folder structure. I don't know if it's visible. Uh, so we have a folder called micro front end. Inside that folder, we have the React one, uh, the first micro front end. Um, it's like a self, um, contained uh, app that is creating one of the one of the parts that we saw in the previous diagram 
Um, I think I'm going to, um, in, that, in that video, I'm going to try to run it and, and just to yarn, yarn dev or yarn start, I don't remember exactly. And at the end, so I'm going to move it first forward. I'm going to load the page and you're going to see the first micro front end. Second, here you go. Hello, micro front tech, React One. So then I wanted to build one more. So what I'm going to do, I think as this is a very, very new, eh? so as the time progresses, they're going to start developing more features to that. Uh, but for now, I only had to do a copy-paste. So I copy-paste the, the React One folder. I've changed the, the packagization. Let me play. And in just a two minutes, I had my second micro front end. It's cool. Um, I'm just going to fast forward. So, you know, you can see I'm changing the, um, the name here. Is this is the container, uh, so it, it runs on Next.js. It uses Turbo Repo that uh, Attila mentioned earlier. And here you can see that I'm hosting the micro front end from a specific um, uh, package.json. So the first package.json is Alicante micro front ends React 1. The second one is Alicante micro front ends React 2. Um, okay, let's, let's run it. It will, it, will, it will run, and you will see that both of micro front ends at the moment it's just hello micro front ends React 1 and hello micro front ends React 2. But this could be two modules. Okay, like components, but not in the same app. Um, in the same app, but in, different, um, in the different um, uh, folder and potentially in a different uh, GitHub repo. Um, so, the, what uh, Alex has created here, let's go back to present. Um, he has created something that is easily, you can take um, an old monolith, and with some little changes, you can convert it to a micro front end. And a lot of people are telling me, oh, micro front end is for for only for uh, big teams, or uh, when, when a company has developed quite a lot. Well, yes, it can be for really big teams, because if you are a team of five, you're not going to use micro front ends, but you need to plan ahead. So when you're about to scale, you can, uh, you can have that planned. And with this kind of features that this framework gives you, you can do it. Okay, so yeah, if you want to grab this code, it's on this repo, you can play with it. You can, you can copy. Okay, but um, from what I've seen from my experience, um, and what micro frontends do is removing the dependency. Because as frontend developers and as um, JavaScript developers, we have a lot of dependencies. How many of you are waiting for someone to give you an API? How many? Many. And how it takes a long time to get that API, right? And then you have to, to, to mock the data, and then they have to come back, and then you have to integrate it. So there is so much going back and forth. So for my, what I think is good is to think of micro front ends as end-to-end. Um, as front-end developers and as um, JavaScript developers to, to really run full-stack micro front-ends. So that was the idea of the talk. So in the first part, I introduced to micro front-ends. You should all by now know a bit how they work. You've seen them working. We did a bit of introduction. But is it possible to run micro front um, like Node in uh, micro front-ends? When I started using that framework, I had a problem where uh, I tried to use, uh, you know, in the next JS, the get static props, but I was getting an error message from Prisma because Prisma only runs on, um, 
on the server, but not on the client. So I was getting this error like Prisma cannot run on the client. Oh yes, of course, because Prisma is server side. So I was thinking, is that possible? And then, um, yeah, we need, what we need in essence is like teams that are up to, up to autonomous, but end to end, not just on the client. And yeah, that's me waiting from a backend developer to give me an API to complete my work. I have to use a, a mock, and then I have to wait for them to, to build it. I have to put it back and integrate it. So yes, thank you very much, backend developer. <laughs> yeah, but it's not, it's not easy to become the front-end full-stack developer. That's not easy as well. Um, so yeah. Um, and one way of doing it is GraphQL. I don't know if you know Roy Dirks. Roy, where are you? Yes, if you like GraphQL, go to Roy. Roy knows all about it, and he's an advocate of that. And GraphQL is an open source data query. Uh, it has been developed by Facebook, and it has been publicly released, and you can all use it. So. You know, you can use Apollo, right, right, Dirk? Yeah, yeah. So, what Lucas said in his book is that it can be used as an API gateway. And you, it can act as a single entry point for your entire, entire API layer, and it can simplify data retrieval for, your, for the clients. What Prisma can do on the other hand, which it can also do GraphQL, but you can also run the client and you can access the data directly from your um, apps. It, it can work with any database. So you can have um, in, like you can have schema federation, but you can also have database federation. Um, so the idea is that we can have like a, a product catalog, um, I have twice the product catalog, sorry. Uh, product reviews, a basket, and a sign up. And you can have that Prisma client, and it can work for all your micro front end. Um, you can have a, but you can also have a single schema for every micro front end. And there is no need for database knowledge. Um, you can have direct database access from your. Um, uh, JavaScript code, and you can use any database you want. You can have um, SQL, uh, MySQL, uh, SQL Server, MongoDB, Postgres, and uh, you can have anything you want. Um, so you have to define first a schema, which looks like this, and it's very easy to, to write. So let's say we have a store. The store has an ID. Uh, the ID is a, un uh, it's a unique, so it can also upgrade, uh, you know, you can increment it every time you create a store. It can have a title, a location, you can define, it's very type safe, TypeScript, yeah. And um, you can have a product and then, yeah, all that. That's a schema. So, um, as an example, that's a page. It has a product list. It has a user information. Um, and offers. All this can be different micro front ends that have their own database. Or they can have the same database, if you want. Um, to use Prisma, there are like a set steps you can you have to take. You have to install the um, Prisma, you have to initialize it. Uh, when you initialize it, it creates a Prisma schema. Uh, you can modify the schema, and then you can deploy that schema to, the, to your GitHub repo, and we're going to see how cool the, the, the new data proxy is. Um, so yeah, all these additional features that uh, Prisma gives you, and which we're going to have a look in a second. Um, you can, um, so they have a new feature that you can, uh, you can use Prisma on the edge. So you can have edge functions. 
and you can call them um, uh, directly Prisma from um, from your code, and it's quite quite cool. Okay, let's have a look on the on the Prisma proxy. This I have to say that uh, it might change a little bit uh, because. Um, they are doing it at the moment. So you, what you can see here, I can create a project which is called user orders. I can go to a repo. I can select the repository. So in this case, it's React, React uh, Alicante micro front end. And then the main, the main branch. And then down here, I can specify um, where the schema is. So in, in this case, it's orders slash, that's where the repo. When I press that, I have the choice of selecting uh, where I want to uh, build it. At the moment, I have Heroku, but Heroku is no longer free. Boo. <laughs> and uh, and uh, yes, the. What it does basically now, when I press the create project, it will create a database in Heroku, which is really cool. So it's setting up the project, and it's giving me the URLs where I can, uh, use, the, I can use inside my code to access the Prisma client. One is the for Edge, so Next.js and Edge functions, so this is the first one. And the second one is the directly to the Postgres. Um, I will press, I think, done at that point. Yet, yep. And then inside that uh, little uh, dashboard, you can go through. You can see your data. You can change your data while you are working. You can um, you can uh, try to change the schema, and you can uh, try to do filter. So Prisma has also nice fi filters. Instead of doing select this, this from this from this table, where this and that, you can write it in a more JavaScript way. So in this case, I'm creating a user myself, and I can then use it inside my code. So that's what we're gonna see in a, in a second. So yeah, this has created the data in the database. Okay. Um, let me see how much doing this time. Okay. So yeah, you can create a database. You can browse your data. You can query. Uh, you can use the query console to, to query your data, and you can also see your schema, the schema you are loading. So yeah, I was in a Greek island about a month ago. I was thinking, okay, the idea that I wanted to show in this conference was um, um, how to use Prisma inside the micro front end. But I didn't have the solution. So I was, I was really nervous. <laughs> I couldn't dance with all the other people. And uh, because I was getting this Prisma, is not, it cannot load on the browser. So I had to use module federation for that. So many people think that Webpack is like uh, really complicated, but it has really a lot of cool features. The, um, the previous demo, we they used Turbo Repo. In this one, they're using uh, Webpack. Uh, web, with Webpack, and what I'm gonna show you now, it's like just came out of the oven, let's say. Um, it's very fresh. It's the Module Federation SSR which means that we can load modules, but we can also um, use the get static props and the get server side props. And that's what um, Zach has been building. And Zach has put a lot of time um, and uh, money as well in, um, in the module federation. And what um, he says about module federation that is a distributed application architecture, independent deployed bundles, that's what we said about the micro front ends, working as a monolith at runtime. Okay, so that's, that's the second um, demo of the app that we're gonna go through the code. So let's close this one. 
So basically, what we have here is we have two. Um, we have a home. Let me zoom this one so it's a bit more visible for everyone. Okay, that's better. Yeah. So home is the container app. Then we have item catalog, which is um, the the part of the app that is loading the, the catalog. If we open it up, we can see the Prisma, we can see the schema, we can see that I'm, I'm connecting to a specific uh, Postgres uh, database, okay? And um, we have an item catalog component that what it's doing basically it's using the Prisma client um, to, in, to uh, get all the stores. So what we do here, we instantiate the Prisma client. We are um, uh, fetching all the stores. We don't have to use um, REST, and, and uh, Roy hates REST, right? Roy, Roy Derricks, you hate REST. We don't have to use REST. So we can fetch it with the client. And this is running with get static props. So it's basically server side. And it returns uh, the stores. Um, we have a, a Next.js config that it exposes um, to all the other apps on the same um, monorepo. The, um, um, pages from so all these three are Next.js projects. So what we are doing, we are importing from one Next.js project to the other pages and components. Um, the home runs on three thousand and one. The orders run on three thousand two ports. And the item catalog runs on 3,000. If we go on the, on, the, on the page, you can see that I have it already open. Um, this is the, the 3,001. Uh, actually, yeah, this is the, the 3,001. But if we go to 3,000, This is where the item catalog exists, okay? So that's where it's loading the item catalog. By using that Next.js and exporting, um, exporting uh, we can now import to, them, to the 3000 home Next.js app the item catalog from a, a, 3000 port. So it's like we are teleporting a, a component and the page from one Next.js project, we have three, to another. And what that means is that one team can work on the item catalog that is loading on 3000, but then they can import it on a project that you have all the micro front ends working together as one. Okay? That means that, um, let's see, we have also on 3001 uh, the orders. We can do the same thing with the orders. Yes, so micro front end B, orders, but what we can do we can import both micro front ends in one page now what happens here is that if i go and change the micro front end a the micro front end b won't have a problem because they are not in the same app not on the same monolith. So I can make changes on runtime. Um, 
I mean, I don't have all of that created, but I know that uh, if you follow Zach, he has a lot of uh, stuff and uh, demos of that. And you can see how that works. You can deploy all this in a, a, in a AWS S3 um, bucket, but you can always make changes on um, individual micro front ends without um, impacting the other micro front end. Um, so this way we can uh, have um, we can have uh, uh, autonomous teams working on specific uh, parts of the app without impacting the other team. But mainly, what I want to focus is that you can also, if you add other parts like Prisma or uh, GraphQL, you can uh, also have end-to-end um, -end independence. Because what micro frontends are are doing, they are giving us that independence and being able to be faster without having to depend on someone else doing the work for us. And that's that's what I, I want to emphasize for this uh, talk. Um, with the slides, okay. So yeah, that's that's all um, for me. Um, gracias, thank you, Harsto. And if you have any questions, feel free to, and I have stickers, I have stickers, if you want, come and find me.